The Singapore Heritage Festival returns on Friday. For the first time in 17 years, it's going digital. And you can learn about Singapore's heritage and culture right from the comfort of your own home. From making the traditional Chinese uh, pastry to watching a mini-series on the history of Pasir Ris. Nisha Rahim reports. Making a traditional Chinese pastry ang kueh from scratch is no mean feat, especially when it's moulded and filled by hand. This old-school confectionery in Everton Park is one of the very few left in Singapore who still hand-makes its ang kueh, and he has been in business for nearly 30 years now. It takes an entire day to make the snack, processing the sweet feeling, moulding the glutinous rice flour skin into shape, and finally, steaming it. If you want to learn how to make the pastry from the experts, this year's Singapore Heritage Festival will allow you to do so online. But even with technology coming to the forefront, tradition still remains. With the uh, selling tradition, the selling nostalgia, the one big part that we always try to do is to share the tra uh, Chinese tradition to get the people to know their roots. And a big part of tradition is food. And Angkukwe is a big part of it. So uh, teaching the young ones. Among other highlights at this year's festival is a five-part mini-series from Singapore's leading arts company, Act 3 International. It will explore the history of Pasir Ris and the area's untold stories. It is a combination of several art forms, theatre, film, photography, cinematography and storytelling, all created uh, for a digital transmission. The first story is about four young people and how through their sheer will and determination, they overcome a long, arduous journey to get to the far reaches of Pasir Ris so that they can camp along the, the beautiful coastline and enjoy the sunset. Despite the novelty and excitement of the festival going digital for the first time, it does come with certain challenges. Beyond providing online content, the bigger challenge is really how do you build a digital community? You know, for us, that means looking at how festival goers can connect with other festival goers in the digital sphere. The festival has always brought people together. It's brought uh, like-minded heritage lovers together and we hope to continue this in the virtual sphere as well. Beyond the restrictions of the pandemic, the Singapore Heritage Festival will look into marrying on-site and digital experiences in the future. This year's festival will be held from 19 June to 5th July. And for a closer look at some of this year's highlights, we're joined by watercolour artist Colleen Law. So Colleen, you know, this year's um, Heritage Festival will be spotlighting, we know that it's going to be spotlighting Pasiris, and it's a place where you've lived since 1994. So what kind of memories does the neighbourhood hold for you? And, you know, also how has that shaped your work as an artist? <laughs> Well, yeah, we've been living here for 26 years and uh, we have, you know, great memories of the pastories even way before uh, my family moved here in 1994. So uh, we enjoyed coming to the chalets, the bungalows, you know, the resort. And um, I just really enjoy being so close to nature and that has really uh, inspired my work as an artist because um, I'm very inspired by nature, the wildlife. Um, and uh, I, I have like a painting right here to show you as well. So, Carlin, it's not just uh, paintings and you being an artist as well. You've also, uh, we understand, put together a documentary on Pasir Ris, and that'll be uh, featured as part of the festival. Uh, were there interesting but lesser known stories perhaps that you found out about Pasir Ris along the way? Oh, plenty. You, you'll be surprised at um, the history behind Pasir Ris. Uh, one of them is um, really um, at my doorstep. I'm, I'm living across the fishing pond and uh, I learned that it was the former Golden Palace Holiday Resort. Um, so I was trying to fish up literally uh, more information about it and uh, I asked my father um, I said have you been there before do you know what it was and he said yes when he was uh, 
uh, a young lad at 23 years old, he and his friends actually visited it, um, Golden Palace Holiday Resort. There you go. And he described how it is, um, how much they paid, uh, the lunch pack they had. I think they paid 250 to get in and the lunch. And it was quite a big sum for, for them because they were earning about 100 in those days. So he was describing it, you know, a very colorful uh, place to be among the old kampongs of Pasiris. And he also introduced me to his friend, Uncle Samat, uh, Mr. Samat Sulaiman, uh, whom I, I also interviewed for the documentary because uh, Uncle Samat's family, the four generations, uh, were all from a fishing, a fishing village, a kampong, in the Pasiris area back then. And his uh, colourful recollection of his kampong days were really amazing. And, and I'm glad you get to hear some of these stories in the documentary. We are looking forward to that. Um, but also joining us, uh, we also have uh, Yuan Engwa, and he's Assistant General Manager from Peik Sin Chun Nanyang Tea. So, um, Engwa, we know that uh, Nanyang Tea will be incorporated into the festival in the form of a brewing challenge. Can you share more details about this competition? Well, uh, actually, in uh, Nanyang Tea Challenge was actually started in 2018 as part of the uh, this Singapore Heritage Festival to inculcate and promote Nanyang Tea, uh, Nanyang uh, this uh, heritage and culture, right? We actually didn't call it a competition because our intention is for them to come forward and challenge themselves, uh, just like our forefather when they first rooted themselves in Singapore, right? So to us, all of the challenger are winners. This year, because of COVID-19, actually, we moved the whole challenge online, which is also a challenge to ourselves. Right. And uh, after an interesting uh, preliminary rounds, we actually moved to the final now, and it's going to be held on this Sunday, uh, 21st mm -hmm. of June, on 11, over YouTube. And the final will actually have this challenger demonstrating their creativity in tea and food pairing within the Nanyang context. And just tell us then what significance does the Nanyang tea play in Singapore's history? And, and what is the importance of the, the pairing aspect that you mentioned? Right. Okay. In Nanyang tea is actually a locally blended and roasted tea using O or we call HT and new tea, right? And uh, it was developed in a century ago because during then telecommunication, transportation was bad and it affected the supply of the tea to the Nanyang region. But because of uniqueness of taste, it became the right tea to pair with the food here, right? To see the evolution of the Nanyang tea, we can actually use the history of Bakute, which started in late 19th century. In the early days, this tea, chip tea, was actually, actually served free of charge to all the customer using big kettle and pour into a rice bowl. As people become more affluent, better tea is used using smaller teapot and smaller cups. Few years back, we actually introduced cold served Nanyang tea into the Babukute outlets. And recently, uh, recently only, Nanyang tea is used to make into tea beer to go with Babukute. Right. On a broader view, this tea is also used in sparkling tea, bubble tea, kombucha, ice cream, cake, and even more. So although it's a traditional blend, its uniqueness actually enticed many. Right, so it's the uh, old and new, that, that perfect blend. I do like my bakuja, I have to say, Ingwa. But you know, the process is um, increasingly is getting digitalized. What do you hope can actually be preserved? Okay, just like a tree, without a strong root, it cannot grow well. Not to mention have healthy leaves, flower blossom, or even the bare fruits. So in Nanyang Tea Heritage, the roots actually lies in the five senses and human touch. Without these foundations, we cannot extend it to other use. 
Well, indeed. Thank you so much um, for joining us this evening. And we've been speaking there with um, Yuan Eng Wang, Assistant General Manager from Peck Sin Peck Sin Chun Nanyang Tea and Watercolor Artist Carleen Law here. Thank you so much.